Hello there everyone. I get asked all the time on how I do high dynamic range or HDR photos and so I decided to make a quick video tutorial on my workflow. Um, I'm going to be using a T3i camera because this is a very popular um, model as far as consumers go. A lot of people have these. They're great cameras um, and it will do what I need it to do. Basically you need a camera to allow you to take different exposure levels, which generally means you need it to be able to go onto manual or aperture priority um, so that you can take your images. For this tutorial I'm going to be mixing three different or combining three different photos of different exposure levels. We're going to have an underexposed photo, an overexposed photo, and then we're going to have um, a exposure that's right in the middle of those, of those two. And then we're going to combine these and that's going to give us our final result. Now if you need help on finding out how to take photos at different exposure levels, then you can easily Google around whatever your camera is and you'll be able to find the settings for that. For me, uh, I will be putting this camera on aperture priority mode because I don't want the aperture to change so that my depth of field will not change. And I will be taking three separate exposures like I previously mentioned. These cameras actually have an option called um, exposure compensation, which basically allows me to take three photos and one will be underexposed, overexposed, and one um, normal exposure. And so I basically will set this camera on a two second timer on a tripod and I will push down the shutter and it will take all three photos for me. So fairly easy to do. You can manually do it. You don't have to do it that way. You can just change your exposure manually, take the shots, and, and you'll have them. Um, you can also do it with more than three files. You don't have to do it with just three pictures. You can try six or nine or, you know, whatever. But three will definitely give you good results. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Also, I highly recommend that you make sure that your camera is set to take photos in raw format because there is going to be much more data for the, for the software to use. Because if you just use JPEGs, then that's a compressed file that throws away a whole bunch of information. So use RAW because you'll get much better results out of it. I'm going to hurry and run outside and take a quick photo of a pair of shoes. And um, I'll be right back and we'll jump into it. Okay, I'm back and I now have my three files that we're going to be working with. As you can see, I have a normal exposure, a underexposed shot, and a overexposed shot that we're going to be using to mash together to give us our final HDR image. So my next step is to open up Photomatix Pro, which is the software I use to do this. Um, I highly recommend it. There will be a link in the description that will take you to their website where you can download it for either Windows or Macintosh. Um, other programs do this, such as Photoshop. Uh, I know CS5 and CS6 will do it. Um, there's probably plugins for other programs. I'm not really sure as this is pretty much my bread and butter when it comes to HDR images because it just works. So. I'm going to hit the uh, load bracketed folder button on this left side here. It's going to give us a browser window that we can use to navigate to our folder with the images inside. Uh, make sure you select all the images that you want it to use. Hit load and that will load it up in the, in the option window here. Hit OK and it'll bring you to the pre-processing options. Now you can play with some of these. Here's what I use. I uh, use the align source images option. I always leave that checked. That's basically so if you take a photo that isn't perfectly aligned, it'll do its best to line it up. Um, I highly recommend taking these shots, any HDR shots, locked off on a tripod using a timer setting on the camera or um, using a remote so you don't bump it. Um, if for some reason you don't have a tripod and you're out somewhere you really want to take an HDR photo, do your best to hold it still and um, this program may be able to align it, but it's not guaranteed. I also check reduce chromatic aberrations. And basically it says, attempts to correct for color fringing due to chromatic aberrations of the lens. Note that checking this option increases processing time. It doesn't increase that much and it's worth it because it will correct um, those strange, um, they're kind of fuzzy purple lines that can show up on uh, things, especially that are out of focus. The white balance I use, um, I always leave it as shot. I've never messed around with it before. Feel free to if you'd like, but I would imagine you're just going to leave it how it is for your first attempt at uh, doing this. Then if I hit pre-process, it's going to generate our um, close to final image. And this can take a minute, 
if you're on a slower machine, just give it some time. Uh, don't worry about it. It seems like it's hung up because it will eventually pop up. When it does come up, it's going to give us kind of a, a quick and dirty representation of what our image is going to look like. Sometimes you're going to like it, sometimes you won't. Um, and this basically just loaded a black and white version because when I did my last HDR photo, I probably did it in black and white and it just loaded my last settings. Um, down here at the bottom, it's got different presets that you can click through. I generally don't use these, but I will use them as an idea of what my photo can look like. Um, just to get the point across of HDR, I'm going to use this more dramatic version. Now, I think this is what they refer to as overcooked, which means just really overprocessed. But it kind of looks cool with the shoes, so I'm going to leave it uh, just so you can see the difference. Um, up here at the top, you'll see kind of a big purplish blob. If I click on it, it'll give me 100% zoom over here. A lot of times this comes from a highlight being um, basically blown out, or there's too much of a highlight up there, and that's what happens in the software. Generally, you won't see this. Um, if you're shooting into the sun or a uh, reflection, there's a really bright object. Um, I would recommend shooting five or seven shots, different exposures, um, and that way it'll give the software that much more information to work with to hopefully give you better results. Generally, I never see that, um, but I'm kind of glad it popped up so I could discuss it real quick. I will definitely be cropping this photo down anyway to the shoes and I'll be cutting that out. On this left hand side, you're going to see a panel and this is where all the magic happens. It will give you your different options. Now you can um, find Photomatics tutorials online that will go ex into extreme depth for each of these options. I usually find that learning by doing is a, is a very good way to do something like this. Um, just by playing with the sliders, you'll be able to see that you can get dramatic results. And I'm pretty much going to leave it how it is. Like I said, um, I like the uh, I like the the result that it's given us right off right off the bat. So I'm going to go ahead and process this. And when you hit process, it's basically going to create a TIFF file that's going to be very large, and probably don't want it to be your final image as it's, it'll just be cumbersome to work with. Um, so I'm going to save it out and I'm going to reopen it in um, some photo editing software such as Lightroom or Photoshop. I'll be using Lightroom for this example. Um, you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. It saves it as a 16-bit TIFF file. So I'll save that out and then I will navigate to the folder. Here is our HDR image right here and I'm going to like I said, open it up inside of Lightroom where I'm going to do a little bit more um, editing. Okay, now I have my HDR image loaded up in Lightroom where I'm going to do a couple more adjustments before I'm finished. First thing I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to crop it down just because I just want this to be a tighter shot of the shoes. So we'll call that good right there. Um, then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, clarity to it. That's just going to kind of bump up um, the detail in there, make it a little more, uh, I like to call it crunchy, I don't know, a little more vivid, I guess. Um, and I'm going to bump the exposure up just a tad. Uh, obviously, in here, you can play around with any settings you want. Uh, you can get really creative. Uh, add a little, just a bump of an S curve here on my tones. And uh, I think that gives me a pretty cool shot. Obviously, it's extreme and it's quite overprocessed, but um, I like that, especially for this tutorial to really give you a clear idea of what you can do with this. Then I'm, I'm going to export this out as a JPEG and um, I'm going to limit its file size just down to 800K just so it's easier to work with. Um, obviously, if you're printing this, you could export it out to whatever options you wanted to print at. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Here's our final results. Um, you can see on the left hand side we have the straight out of camera normal exposure um, as compared to on the right hand side our HDR image which you can see has a much more dynamic look to it which is the whole point. Um, I hope this tutorial helped you out and if it did please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel and um, if you have any photographic or video questions you'd like me to answer or um, if you'd like to see tutorials 
on other topics, please let me know what they are, and I would love to help out in any way I can. You can follow my blog at tasteofjace.blogspot.com. I will be posting uh, future tutorials along with other articles that I write about, um, all to do with photography and video um, generally. So feel free to follow that if you'd like, and um, I hope I can help out. And of course, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you back here next time.